This morning, when I was just waiting in the Lord's presence, the Lord wanted me to encourage the church and also those of you who are tuning in online on responding to this prophetic word. So, 31st night, I gave you the word. On first morning, we took communion. We just accepted the reality that we were stepping into a new reality that the rich harvest was last year's word. This year is going to be unusual miracles. But this year, it's going to be a year of unusual miracles. Some strange things are going to happen. Strange things in the sense of, you know, God things, right? The work of God is going to be very evident in your life. Very, very evident. And so I asked the Lord, I said, why is it so important for us to recognize your voice? How many of you ever asked yourself that question? Why is it important for us to recognize the voice of God? You see, when God speaks to us, we must respond. When God spoke to me three weeks ago about this word, I responded. I immediately called my team outside the church. We worked on this project. We got everything done. And I want to release it on the 31st. Because responding to the voice of God is as important as hearing the voice of God. Make sense? Responding to the voice of God is as important as hearing the voice of God. So we all have heard the voice of God that he is going to make this year for Amazing Love Church truly a year of unusual miracles. Stuff that you've been praying for years, it's going to happen this year. If you truly have the heart and the faith to see it happen in your life. So it is very important for us to respond to God. Now, all of us have phones. All of us are connected on different social profiles. I want you to understand, in the human world, how people respond to us determines the continuity of our relationship with them. I will not respond to somebody, no matter text, email, whatever. I will not respond to anybody if there is no determined effort from their side to hear my voice again. The same is true of God. Because as humans, if people respond inappropriately, if they ignore your you know, voice or despise you, definitely your response will not be to continue the relationship. Many of us today in the body of Christ, we receive message after message, sermon after sermon, word after word, prophecy after prophecy, listen to podcast after podcast, songs minister to us, counseling after counseling, but we don't respond to the word of God and that's why we don't see any fruit in our life. The problem the Lord was showing me on this Sunday morning as I was waiting in his presence, he said, our response is the problem. The prophecy is not the problem. The revelation is not the problem. The word is not the problem. Our response is the problem. And that is why we sense discontinuity in our relationship with God. And that is why many people come and tell me, Pastor, last year I felt so close to God. I felt like he was speaking so clearly. Suddenly, I'm not hearing him anymore. You know why? It is because God is speaking from his end and his heart is always that he wants to speak to you. But you are not responding appropriately. You are ignoring him. You are denying the validity of his word. And when God speaks, sometimes he encourages us. Sometimes he chastises us. Sometimes he rebukes us. Sometimes he warns us. Sometimes he, you know, he corrects us. I want you to understand, if you want to hear God's voice continually, then continue your pursuit of him. If you sense discontinuity in your life, the problem is not at God's end. The problem is at your end. Your response is the problem. So the Lord was telling me to tell the church, be careful how you respond. And when he woke me up and I spoke to my wife, I said, hey, what's the response going to be? Are we going to just, just, just eat more plum cakes and you know more biryanis and just more barbecues? She said, no, we're going to respond to this word in faith. We're going to respond to this word seeking him more than we sought him in 2020. So more prayer, more of the word, more of his presence, 
more seeking people who are in need to help them. I want you to understand the response will always be the problem. Not the prophetic word. So how should we respond? Number one, you got to respond by obeying. Number two, obeying without any delays. The moment I heard this word, the fasting prayer night, I immediately put it down in my diary. And I said, Lord, I'm going to sit, release this word at the right time. I kept it in my heart at the right time. I spoke it out on 31st night. Obedience without delay is the best way to respond to God. Obedience without delay. Yes, God does not live in the realm of time. God is not subject to time. Time is subject to God. God lives in eternity. We live in time. God is not limited to the realm of time, but his instructions, please note down, are time sensitive. God is not limited by time, not subject to time. He does not live in the realm of time, but his instructions are time sensitive because he is the only one who knows the future and what is in store for us. He knows how this world will come to reality and fruition in the days ahead. You know what happens when you don't obey without delay? It's called delayed obedience. And delayed obedience is called disobedience. Delayed obedience is called disobedience. And this delayed obedience has caused people breakthroughs. This delayed obedience has caused people healings. This delayed obedience has caused people deliverances. This delayed obedience has caused people loved ones. And this delayed obedience has caused people spiritual mantles. Obedience without delay is the true response of a child of God. Like a Samuel, you got to be a Samuel in this generation. An obedient heart without delay. Please understand the reason why we must be very careful with God's instructions for us is because his instructions are time sensitive. Because seasons change very, very quickly. Seasons change very, very quickly. The world was going in one direction, suddenly Corona hit, everything changed. Now we are talking about a new normal. Seasons change very, very quickly. So we must be careful how we discern the times and seasons of our life. And there's one statement that I put down. I think it's so powerful. You can note it down. It says, God is only committed to his word when we do all that is required of it. This is not for everybody. God is only committed to this word when we do all that is required of this word. The only thing free is salvation. Everything else has terms and conditions applied. Only salvation is free. But in our Indian culture, anything free, we're there. Everything after salvation has terms and conditions applied. So God is only committed to his word when we do all that is required of it. So is it true that this teaching on delayed obedience is biblical? Yes, it is. I'd like to turn your attention. It's not my passage for this morning, meditation. But there's a particular story that I would like to highlight about the danger of delayed obedience. So the first thing the wife and I did when we got that warning was to begin our prayer. Like oxygen to the physical body, prayer to the spiritual body. Like oxygen is to your physical life, prayer must be to your spiritual life. We are not here for biryanis and barbecues. This is not that kind of church. Please find some other church. This is a house of prayer. We are here to help the spiritual lives of people. We are soul doctors. And so I want to challenge every one of you, if you've not had this experience and deeper experiences in prayer, you need to start pursuing God. And there's a particular passage in the Bible that really drew my attention this morning as I was reading 1 Samuel 15, 9. 1 Samuel 15, 9. A story about King Saul. God had given King Saul instructions. What should King Saul have done? 
God told King Saul, destroy all the children, all the beasts in a particular situation. What did King Saul say? He did not carry out it totally. All the instructions that the Lord had told him when he spoke to him about destroying the Amalekites. That is called partial obedience. God said, destroy all children, all beasts. He's talking about the Amalekites. Destroy all of them, he said. That's called partial obedience. He didn't. He didn't do totally. And that was the beginning of his fall from grace. Now I want you to read 1 Samuel 15, 26. Quickly. 1 Samuel 15, 26. Someone can, at the location can please help me read that. And Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord. For you have rejected the word of the Lord. Delayed obedience, partial obedience. And the Lord has rejected you. And the Lord has rejected you. No point getting this great word. You're of unusual miracle. So what? If you're not willing to do all that is required of this word. To see that this word becomes a reality this year in your life and your family. Hallelujah. King Saul had good intentions. You know why he didn't destroy the Amalekites? He had good intentions. He had good reasons for not obeying God. And we all do. You have good reasons for not coming for prayer. You have good reasons for not coming to church. You have good reasons for not you know, being connected with the ministry. You have good reasons for not praying in your own private club. You have good reasons for not reading the word. You have good reasons for not committing to being a blessing in the kingdom of God in some way or the other. You have good reasons. Paul had good reasons. He had good intentions. What did Saul say? Can someone read 1 Samuel 15, 15? 1 Samuel 15, 15. Stop. Saul is deciding. He's not obeying God fully. He's not doing all that is required in the word. Saul is thinking, there are some nice sheep, bulls and goats. Why don't we bring these sheep and bulls and goats and offer it to the Lord? Who asked him to do that? God never said keep some 10%, 20% for offering. Who said? He said, destroy all children, destroy all beasts. Saul in his own mind. And that heart is called a heart of delayed obedience. Partial obedience. So he spared the animals so he could offer. God never asked him to do that. A lot of you are stuck in so many areas. God never asked you to do those things. You yourself are imagining those things. If you simply come to God and obey his word and instruction, you will save time and you will cross over to the new season. A lot of our struggles... A lot of the reasons we are stuck is because we imagine things that God has said. God never told Saul to keep that. But Saul did it. He had good intentions, apparently. Good reasons. Because it did not matter to God. What, really God was, what, what God was really seeking for was complete obedience. Total obedience. No explanations. Just obey. That's it. Without delay. And guess what happens in 1 Samuel 15, 22. John, read that. 1 Samuel 15, 22. Look at what God responds. Has the Lord as great light in your eyes? Has the Lord as great light burnt offerings and sacrifices? As in obeying the voice of the Lord? Who cares about your burnt offerings and sacrifices? Who cares about your money? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. To obey is better than sacrifice. The heart of God will always be to seek Children who are fully committed, fully obedient, without any delays. And so, as we receive this Rema for our church, for this whole year, I've already begun to see some breakthroughs in my own personal life. When the word came on 31st night, second day, I started receiving breakthroughs. Things that I've been struggling, things that I've been struggling to understand have been moving. Because remember what I shared on 31st night? You got to live this year every day with a high level of expectance. If you don't have expectancy, forget about your miracle. It's not going to come. You can go all over the world to the best servants of God and churches and have all the greatest worship experiences. But if your expectancy level is low, even the manifestation level will be low. So the word, this word, Acts 19, 11 to 12, 
has become my reference point. My question to you is, has this word become your reference point? This word has become a reference point to me because I want to see God fulfill this promise over ALC, over my family, over my children and over every one of you. You see, when the word is planted in your spirit, there is a person called Satan who does not want the word of God to manifest. He's trying everything he can to stop this word from manifesting. He tried so much in 2020 to stop the word from manifesting. 2019 in ALC was a year of acceleration. When I released it on 31st, one of our American pastors who was serving with us, he showed me a video of a very, of many renowned prophets in, in his country who were releasing the same word on acceleration. They saw a spiritual acceleration in the heavenlies. Every year after that, when the Lord has been speaking of this church, Satan has tried to stop the word from manifesting. And so I wanted a, a, a very good passage which will help our church understand how important it is not only to receive this prophetic word and get excited about it, put the bookmarks in your pocket and you know, wherever you go, people see and you share with them. It is so much more important that we keep the condition of our heart right so the word takes root and begins to produce fruit. Amen? No root, no fruit. For the fruit to come, the root has to be good. So I trust and I believe that all of you who believe in Amazing Love Church Ministries, who have come under this vision, have rooted yourself in this church, and you have received this word, Acts 19, 11 to 12, and yet you believe it's going to be a year of unusual miracles. We pay attention to how we can counter in the authority of the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! All power has been given to us in heaven and on earth. All power. And you have that power. He that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. But if you are not watchful, if you are not sober, if you are not alert, if you are not vigilant, the seed that was sown will be taken away. And I want to draw your attention to my passage. All of you turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 8. The parable of the sower. The parable of the sower. Never forget this teaching on how to respond to God's word. This morning my text is Luke chapter 8. My title is Responding to Prophetic Words. Responding to Prophetic Words. How do we respond to prophetic words? How do you respond to this word? Now the Bible says, when a large crowd was gathering together and people from city after city were coming to him, he spoke using a parable. He said, the sower went out to sow his seed and as he sowed, some fell beside the road and it was trampled underfoot and the birds of the sky ate it up. Talking about a seed. And some seed fell on uh, the rocks and as soon as it sprouted, it withered away because it had no moisture. Then he says, other seed fell among the thorns and the thorns grew up with it and choked it out. Then the Bible says, and some fell into good soil and grew up and produced a crop a hundred times as great. And as he said these things, he called out, he who has ears to hear, let him hear and heed my words. Then the disciples began asking him, what does this parable mean? And he said, to you it has been granted to know and recognize the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it is in parables, so that those seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now, the parable is this. This is the explanation Jesus gives. He says, the seed is the word of God. Acts 19, 11 to 12, the seed is the word of God. Those beside the road are the people who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes the message away from their hearts. His, his, his heart is to take this word away from you so that they will not believe. What a powerful statement. Then the Bible says, Those on the rocky soil are the people who when they hear, receive and welcome the word with joy, but they have no firmly grounded root. Man, they believe for a while and in time of trial and temptation, they fall away from me and abandon their faith. These are the ones who have heard, but as they go on their way, they are suffocated with the anxieties and riches and pleasures of this life and they bring no fruit to maturity. And the last verse it says, but as for that seed, as for that seed, out of all the seeds, out of all the types of soils, 
There is one seed and that is the seed the Lord wants ALC to have all 365 days of this year. And he says, but as for that seed, you see how he singles that seed out? He singles that seed out, he says, in the good soil, these are the ones who have heard the word with a good and noble heart. I don't know how many of you 31st night sitting at home really received this word with a good and noble heart. I remember last year when all of them were here, a lot of them came up to your service and said, I don't care about anybody else in this church. I received that word and I know it's going to be here rich harvest. And truly when I spoke to them at the end of the year, whatever part of the world they're in, all of them said exactly what God said he would do. He did. And he came through for me. You see, it matters. It matters. The condition of your heart matters. Do you receive prophetic words with a good and noble heart? The same verse, the last part of the verse, it says, And hold on to it tightly. And bear fruit with patience. You see, we don't read the Bible inside out. We just read it, we skim through the Bible. Daily bread kind of experiences. Look at what it says. You need to have a good and noble heart, number one. Number two, you got to hold on to it tightly. And number three, you got to bear fruit with patience. Let me quickly explain. The first soil it fell on was the wayside. When the seed fell on the wayside, the devil stole it. The Bible says, you know why? The devil stole it because of unbelief. You know why the enemy wants to take away belief from you? Because if belief goes, hope goes. And when hope goes, everything goes. And as God's word comes to us, we must fight in this year thoughts of unbelief. That means if you have been believing God for something, maybe it's a property, maybe it's a visa, maybe it's a college seat, maybe it's a job situation, maybe it's a position, maybe it's a particular status that you've been asking God, maybe it's influence, whatever health, whatever it is, if you're asking God, you must fight daily thoughts of unbelief and familiarity because when you struggle with unbelief and familiarity what happens is you begin to trivialize the word unbelief trivializes the word of God familiarity trivializes the word of God so I believed every word that God spoke over the church and he has truly proven it and even this word that he's spoken I truly believe and I don't want to get familiar with this word because after Corona hit in March, I struggled as I fought against unbelief. I really struggled. I said, Lord, truly, did you say you're a rich harvest? What do you mean rich harvest? What, what did you mean rich harvest? May, June, somewhere along July, I was set free. But I struggled for two or three months as I prayed. You have to fight thoughts of unbelief. Situations will come against you. Storms will arise. But I'm asking you, is your seed on the wayside? You got to be careful because if your seed is on the wayside, even right now as you listen, as you hear me speak this word, you must be careful because Satan is taking something away from you. Just like he took away the seed from the wayside. What is the condition of your heart today? Online family out of location. What is the condition of your heart today? The second soil that it fell on was what? Rock. Right? Look at what it says. These guys that received the word, their, their heart was like seed that fell on rock. Look at the anticipation. I know how people are on 31st night. Full maja madi only. That kind of experience. 31st night. You want. You're full of joy. Excitement. Hey, entering new, happy new, year, bro, and all that. But the Bible says, so powerful, they welcome the word with joy, but they have no firmly grounded root. In other words, has, has any of you in your home or even in your, in your native place, in your grandparents' house, resorted to plant a seed on a rock? Anybody? Any fool will do that? Take a seed and put it on a rock and expect something to come? Same thing Jesus is saying. But there are some fellows who do that. No, no, it'll come, it'll come. Nobody plants a seed on a rock. And that's exactly what Jesus is saying. The ones that receive a word like this, and their, like their heart is like a rock. They're joyful, but there's no firmly grounded root. No fruit will come. So in other words, the word, it is 
might be deposited that means they are there in the service they receive the word but it will die because there is no scope for rejuvenation there is no life no seed can come out of a rock let's be clear with that because the rock does not have the quality to hold or sustain life that is why the first soil was wayside the devil took it away the second was rock took it away the first time he took it away why because of unbelief and familiarity the second time he took it away why because of because of no root if you're not firmly grounded in the word of god be careful any time the prophetic word can be taken away from you the third soil before we bring this to a close very very important what does the bible say thorns they received the word the bible says but they are suffocated with the anxieties riches and pleasures of this life i remember sharing this many years ago they say 90% of the population in the world within the seven first seven minutes of waking up will look at their phone the moment you look at the phone in the first seven minutes of you waking up you're already exposing yourself to people who are suffocating with the anxieties of riches and pleasures you look at them on instagram you look at them on facebook it looks like they're having this great life but i've met many of them who have been honest enough to tell me that it's not the reality behind that post the reality in their life is not the reality you see on their posts they are very depressed people very suppressed people very people who have no real uh drive desire for living they have all that and jesus is comparing a seed that falls into such kind of a soil he says no matter how good the seed is all oh, the word was so great the prophetic word was so great the experience of god was so great but if you have a heart that is choked by the pleasures and riches of this life the comfort of this life the seed cannot be brought to maturity that's what the word says the seed cannot be brought to full maturity so far i know so many people who received the calling from god at a very young age but because of the pleasures of this world the word was choked because they ran after pleasure they ran after riches they ran after influence they ran after status they ran after fame and name choked their calling i met many renowned professionals at 50 60 who said god called me when i was 20 but i got carried away with all this and today i regret it i have all this but i'm empty on the inside this is the kind of people that jesus is talking about tons great word great prophecy god called them but their heart was choked because they wanted to be in the cool gang of bangalore and wanted to be among the you know the 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 rich and famous and the who's who in bangalore and many of them i met today One fellow came and told me, "I envy you, man. You gave up all that when you were young for Jesus. Look at how you are now, so blessed." I said, "See, that's true. I'm not going to deny that. But when all of you are partying and all of you are going around with flashy cars and going to different countries for vacations and fla- flaunting your wealth, I started a church with few people, with only so much experience." but i know that in the bible everybody that starts with god from a zero god will always carry to great heights amen it is true in the bible let my boast only be in the lord i take no credit for myself but one thing i know it was worth giving god the best years of my life best i didn't want to give god when i was 40 50 the best no no i want to give god my prime he deserves my prime because this life paul says i now live i live by faith in the son of god so when god called me when i was very young i said yes lord not simply coming to church and saying yes lord yes lord yes yes lord that's all we do as christians it's only lip service god doesn't want lip service he wants a life that is sacrificed as a pleasing offering to him he doesn't care about lip service 
So was, do I regret giving the best years of my life? No. My prime is already gone to God. He already has it. I'm challenging you today as we get to the last part. Has comfort, pleasures, riches, the desire for fame and name choked the word of God in your life? Be careful. The last word. What does he say? But as for that seed, as for that seed in the good soil, these are the ones who have heard the word with a good and noble heart. In other words, they received the word and they fought for the prophetic word. I remember the verse so clearly, the night so clearly, the, the, the Bible so clearly, my, 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 my tears on the verse so clearly, the day God called me to ministry and I obediently came, not to become famous, but to be effective. My wife and I always say, we're not looking for fame, we're looking to be effective. Whoever God sends, we want to give the best to them. Give them the true representation of Christ. Some will accept it. Some, you know, some of the words we speak, they'll fall on the wayside, some on the rock, some among thorns, but the seeds that we have sown, people that had good soil, it has always brought a good fruit. And look at what it says. He says, good and noble heart, hold on to it tightly. And he says, bear fruit with patience. Why does God use the word patience? And that's the most difficult thing for us to, you know why? He allows us to grow in patience because he wants to teach us, train us and give us a deeper experience with him. And then it also says time. God, Bible says, it works everything beautiful in his time. Because there is something called an appointed time. This is chronos time. God also has a time. It's called kairos time. This is clock time. God has appointed time. No matter what you try to do in clock chronos time, won't work. You still have to wait for his kairos appointed time. When the appointed time matches the clock time, you have a kairos moment. And many of us today have to understand that how God is going to make this year, year of unusual miracles, you and I don't know. But we know one thing for sure, patiently, as we hold on, with a noble heart and a good heart, He will make Kronos and Kairos match. And that will be your miracle moment. Hallelujah. So what is our response today? Very, very simple. Three things. And I want you all to underline that as I bring this to a close. The last verse, underline that. Keep a good and noble heart throughout this year. Good and noble heart. A good and noble heart. Every time you encounter the word of God. Have a good and noble heart to receive the word. And make sure it does not fall on the wayside on rocks or among thorns. Make sure it falls on good soil. Because Jesus singled out that soil and said, but for that soil. But for Shirley, but for Joyce, but for Sudhindra, but for John. That soil is something different. Whenever my word touches that soil, I am ready for a fruit. You got to be a heart like that. And I told Lord every day, as a church, as a family, I want to lift my level of expectancy. Even if I can't see it in the horizon, I want to lift my level of expectancy. My heart is going to always be that soil that you singled out in that parable. Something special about that soil. The second thing I want you to keep in mind is hold on to it tightly. What a powerful statement. I'm reading from the Amplified. One of my brothers in Louisiana last year when I traveled, pastors blessed me by a beautiful Amplified. I don't refer it to teach. But whenever I encourage people, I use the Amplified. It's so explicit in its, you know, very elaborate in the way it talks about different things that God is, particularly the teachings of Jesus. Beautiful. First he says, good and noble heart. Second he says, hold on to it tightly. And third he says, you can only bear fruit with patience. In other words, be patient for the miracle to happen. Don't be running around. Trying to make calls and send emails and call this person and say, do you know this person in this, in this, in this, uh, yeah, you know, uh, government and this and that. No, you don't do anything. You just have to be patient. Because he says you can only bear fruit with patience. Without patience, you can never achieve anything in the kingdom of God. In the world you can. Because they apply shortcuts. It's a rat race. Everybody is running around in that corporate, you know. Uh, uh, 
craziness. It's possible there to reach your summit without patience. But in the kingdom of God, no chance. It will not happen. I'm telling you, even before you try it, don't do it. And I thank God that God has allowed us to grow patiently, slowly. But everything we do is solid. And as I bring this to a close, I want to ask you online family and also at a location. Did you truly receive this word with a good and noble heart? Are you willing to hold on to this word tightly? And are you willing to be patient to see this word become a reality in your life?